Internet, hello, you lovelies. Let's talk about the Penguin episode five and what an episode. Last week's episode was largely Arkham-based. It dealt with a lot of the fallout. We found out the truth of what was going on with Sophia and Penguin and how Penguin is much more of a villain than we ever thought to this point. So I was fascinated where episode five would jump in from and what would happen. We're going to talk all about that. We're going to have full spoilers. But before we get into it, if you are new to this page, please hit that subscription bell. We are so close to 36K. I'm right there and I want that sweet 36K. Also, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this episode. We are past the halfway point in the season. And every week I ask myself, how did IGN give this a five? And please like this video if you did in fact like this video. So please subscribe, especially if you like comic books, I do reviews, I do news. If you like movies, I do news and reviews there as well. If you like TV, well, that's what you're here for. So subscribe, comment, like. Let's talk about the Penguin episode five. This was the comeback from that very Sophia-centric episode that I thought did a great job in three parts. Last week, we had the opening being basically the, the present going back into a flashback, the flashback giving us all of the Arkham, and then the very end of the episode giving us the fallout, the end of the Falcone family. And with that end of the Falcone family, I was wondering what could possibly happen this week to keep the stakes escalating as we hit the halfway point. That was episode four. So we're right down the wire, right down the middle. I love that in this episode we get a, uh, how do we even describe it? Like a suit up for an episode. This is the leveling up of a supervillain. We have Sophia fully becoming, even in name, Sophia Gigante. There's, a, there's an, an alias to that that feels like when you take on an identity. She has shed the Sophia Falcone, and now she is the supervillain Sophia Giacante, which she has earned. We have seen how she has taken this mantle. She put on that jacket. She formed this identity. She sits at the table with her new family. And I love that we've got this back and forth between the two leads, effectively, rallying their teams, like rallying their groups. And I think it's an absolutely incredible experience to see a two-villain villain show. Like, the Penguin needs an antagonist, but how do you make that work? You show that he was in the wrong in her forming this identity that he kind of made happen. So, we hate him, but he makes choices that makes him charming, especially in this and any episode with Victor. We see where he's coming from to a point, and I love that... We have built to this moment in the season where everything was supposed to make things better for Penguin. It was supposed to be when the Falcons fall, because he set those dominoes to tip over, then it would be a gang war of whoever was left between the basically the Maronis and the Falcons. And the thing that was supposed to happen with Salvatore didn't. He got out, and now it's a very vengeanceful Salvatore, basically without a family, without anything. Uh, and it's a falcon Sophia without a family, without anything. And I love that in this episode, we, again, kind of understand where Penguin's coming from, but he's making these insanely dastardly moves. The scene of him lighting that guy on fire. The scene of him literally talking about his mother one moment and then lighting a mother on fire to get what he wants he, he has no qualms doing anything that's required, but we also see what led him down that path. So it's this really terrifying, expedited Breaking Bad from Walter to Heisenberg. And it is so incredible, the links they'll both go for power. But we also see in this episode, because of Sophia's intelligence, she takes out the only guy that isn't trustworthy. That conversation with Vidi is genius. She knows she can't trust him. She leverages him just like Penguin would. They both use weaknesses to their advantage. They both think people think little of them and they maneuver that. So I really didn't know if she was going to let Vidi live. And I love that as soon as Vidi shows his true colors, that's it for Vidi. I love that as soon as she's taken on this mantle, we got that incredible walking out shot. We get that powerful introduction to the new fully formed Sophia we have. She sits down. She lays out her plan, and she gets the same disrespect she had always gotten. Slightly tempered here, but the same disrespect takes him out. That's it. She kisses him on the head and said, you're the only made man here, and then kills him, showing her true power and showing everyone else this is a different story. 
they are the backbone of the entire organization. They never got the respect they deserved, and she never got the respect she deserved, and I love how she forms a community. And that's also what I find fascinating about Penguin is he is now trapped in a situation where he's on the run. He's got to figure out his and Victor's situation. I love that the only person he cares about is Victor and his mom, and he trusts, in a way, Victor with his mother, and that they end up back where it all started. We all keep going back to this horrible neighborhood that was destroyed by the Riddler, that has nothing, thanks to the Riddler trying to find balance in Gotham, punish the rich, hurt the poor, and we're back in that neighborhood. And I'm so curious at the end of this episode, I love that we've got the sewer. In Tim Burton's Penguin, uh, in Tim Burton's Batman, the penguin lives in the sewer in a very different way. But I love that we're cycling right back to the penguin in the sewer. That's where it looks like he's going to be forming his entire enterprise, where he'll be able to do what he needs to do to grow this empire in Gotham. We've got this two, you know, plants worth of mushrooms. Is that going to be enough to start, uh, you know, whatever drug trade he wants? How is he going to navigate the drug trade without the triads? How is he going to navigate things without Sophia? He thinks he has power, but I think he's inadvertently uniting everyone that is currently in power against him. And that is so interesting. I think we're about to hit a moment where everything comes together and it's going to be Penguin trying to figure out his sense of community, much like Sophia just figured out hers. I think it's going to be Penguin figuring out his industry and his business and Sophia figuring out hers. But I think it's going to be Maroni and Gigante v. Penguin, v. Cobb and uh, and Vincent and uh, sorry Victor and whoever else they can rally. I'm very excited. I think this episode was a beautiful leveling up. I think Penguin has never been further down, and I don't think Sophia's ever been this high up since Arkham. Uh, I think that Penguin thought things were going to go one way, and he's literally further down than he's ever been. As it is at the end of the episode, it looks like he's literally living in the sewers or in the subway, in in the underground. I, I did call it sewer earlier, but effectively in the underground. I loved his knowledge. I loved, again, the jazz, like in episode three, of him figuring out things as we go along. Um, this was absolutely genius. I love this show so much. I love that they both are so intelligent that, again, this show is a fight show. It's an action show. But instead of punches, it's words, it's dialogue, it's cunning, it's so intelligent. And now we're at a point where Sophia is at the top of the table and Theo Rossi is at the other end. I'm also very curious about Theo Rossi's character. A lot of the internet speculating uh, uh, Crane, if he's going to be Scarecrow. I don't know about that. Maybe. It'd be cool. But I, I wouldn't assume. But then again, I didn't recognize that his boss at Arkham was uh, Mirror Man until I heard his name. I rewatched the show because I love it so much with my family. Uh, so I rewatched that episode and I put together, oh, like, he's Mirror Man. So it could be that we changed uh, Edward Nigma to Edward Nashton and we changed uh, a Crane, Jonathan Crane to Julian Rush, I believe it is. I doubt it, but it's possible. So I love that we've got effectively Sophia as the new Joker, right? Like, she is... Someone out of Arkham that is charming, charismatic, okay with doing crime, and has a psychiatrist uh, in love with her that is willing to do anything she needs, and she's a crime boss. We have a Joker archetype in Sophia, and that is fascinating, and I really dig it. So, episode five, a leveling up, a, uh, a suit-up montage of an episode, and quite the difference, quite the dichotomy between Sophia at the top, post-Arkham, the highest she's been so far, running the family, and Penguin at the bottom after everything Penguin wanted did go down, and then except those mushrooms and that drip play, and then the Maronis are gone. That's it for the Maronis. How will Salvatore respond? Spidey, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? We'll find out next week. Spidey, you good? Spidey likes the show too. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of episode five. Let me know what you think is going to happen in episode 6. I'll be back next week with episode 6. Check out this week from me. Tomorrow, you can see my out-of-the-theater Venom review. I'm seeing Venom the Last Dance uh, at the premiere here in New York. Right now, I'm in L.A., but I'm going to be in New York. Uh, and that is going to be an out-of-the-theater review, like, tomorrow night. And then Tuesday, expect a live This Week in Comics, if all goes well. Live from New York, it's This Week in Comics. And then Wednesday, a non-spoiler review. Friday, a full Venom spoiler review. And I think Thursday, I might do, uh, like, Halloween comics or something fun. And then Easter egg videos Saturday. So a video, like, every day this week, right here after this one. And then, of course, next Sunday, episode 6. So, hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like. What do you think of my her-as-joker idea? 
What do you think about uh, what's going to happen with Theo Rossi's character? What do you think is going to be them coming to a head? It's all coming next week. I'll see you then. Bye, guys. And subscribe.